A. Information was classified as top secret if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause exceptionally grave damage to the national security that the original classification authority was not able to identify or describe. B. Information was classified as secret if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause serious damage to national security that the original classification authority was able to identify or describe. C. Information was classified as confidential if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause damage to national security that the original classification authority was able to identify or describe. 14. What's the difference there? I think they, I think those are the same thing. 14. The classification marking no foreign stood for not releasable to foreign nationals and denoted that dissemination of that information was limited to United States persons. 15. Classified information related to intelligence sources, methods, and analytical processes was designated as sensitive compartmentative information. SKI. SKI was to be processed, stored, or discussed in an accredited, sensitive, compartmented information facility, or SCIF, and only individuals with the appropriate security clearance and additional SKI permissions were authorized to have permission or authorized to have access to such national security information. 16. When the vulnerability of or threat to specific classification classified information was exceptional, and the normal criteria for determining eligibility for access to classified information were insufficient to protect the information from unauthorized disclosure, the United States could establish special access programs, SAPs, to further protect the classified information. The number of these programs was to be kept to an absolute minimum and limited to programs in which the number of persons who ordinarily would have access would be reasonably small and commensurate with the objective of providing enhanced protection for the information involved. Only individuals with the appropriate security clearances and additional SAP permissions were authorized to have access to such national security information, which was subject to enhanced handling and storage requirements. 17. Pursuant to Executive Order 13526, information classified at any level could be lawfully accessed only by persons determined by an appropriate United States government official to be eligible for access to classified information and who had signed an approved non-disclosure agreement, who received a security clearance and who had a need to know the classified information. After his presidency, Trump was not authorized to possess or retain classified documents. 18. Executive Order 13526 provided a former president could obtain a waiver to of the need-to-know requirement if the agency head or senior agency official of the agency that originated the classified information, one, determined in writing that access was consistent with the interest of national security, and two, took appropriate steps to protect classified information from unauthorized disclosure or compromise and ensured that the information was safeguarded in a manner consistent with the order. Trump did not obtain any such waiver after his presidency. The executive branch departments and agencies whose classified documents Trump retained after his presidency. Paragraph 19. As part of his official duties as president, Trump received intelligence briefings from high-level United States government officials, including briefings from the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, senior White House officials, and a designated briefer. He regularly received a collection of classified intelligence from the United States intelligence community, USIC, known as the President's Daily Brief. 20. The U-6 mission was to collect, analyze, and deliver foreign intelligence and counterintelligence information to America's leaders, including the President, policymakers, law enforcement, and the military, so they could make sound decisions to protect the United States. The U-6 consisted of United States Executive Branch departments and agencies responsible for the conduct of foreign relations and the protection of national security. 21. After his presidency, Trump retained a classified retained classified documents originated by or implicating the equities of multiple USIC members and their executive branch departments and agencies, including the following. On to page eight. A. The Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. The CIA was responsible for providing intelligence on foreign countries and global issues to the president and other policymakers to help them make national security decisions. B. The Department of Defense, DOD, was responsible for providing the military forces needed to deter war and ensure national security. 
Some of the executive branch agencies comprising the USIC were within DOD. C. The National Security Agency. The National Security Agency was a combat support agency within DOD and a member of the USIC responsible for foreign signals intelligence and cybersecurity. This included collecting, processing, and disseminating to the United States policymakers and military foreign intelligence derived from communications and information systems, protecting national security systems and enabling computer network operations. D. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. The National, Geosp <laughs> the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency was a combat support agency within DoD responsible for the exploitation and analysis of imagery, imagery intelligence, and geospatial information in support of the national security objectives of the United States and the geospatial intelligence requirements of the DoD, the Department of State, and other federal agencies. E. The National Reconnaissance Office. The National Reconnaissance Office was an agency within DoD responsible for developing, acquiring, launching, and operating space-based surveillance and reconnaissance systems that collected and de delivered intelligence to enhance national security. F. The Department of Energy. The Department of Energy was responsible for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deterrent to protect national security, including ensuring the effectiveness of the United States nuclear weapons stockpile without nuclear explosive testing. G. The Department of State and Bureau of Intelligence and Research. The Department of State was responsible for protecting and promoting United States security, prosperity, and democratic values. Within the Department of State, the Bureau of Intelligence and Research was a member of the USIC and responsible for providing intelligence to inform diplomacy and support United States diplomats. Section. Trump's Public Statements on Classified Information. Paragraph 22. Page 9. As a candidate for President of the United States, Trump made the following public statements, among others, about classifi classified information. On August 18, 2016, Trump stated, In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. B. On September 6, 2016, Trump stated, We also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. On September 7th, 2016, Trump stated, One of the first things we must do is enforce all classification rules and to enforce all laws relating to the handling of classified information. On September 19th, 2016, Trump stated, We also need the best protection of classified information. On November 3rd, 2016, Trump stated, Service members here in North Carolina have risked their lives to acquire classified intelligence to protect our country. 23. As President of the United States on July 26, 2018, Trump issued the following statement about classified information. As head of the executive branch and commander-in-chief, I have a unique constitutional responsibility to protect the nation's classified information, including by controlling access to it. More broadly, the issue of a former executive branch official's security clearance raises larger questions about the practice of former officials maintaining access to our nation's most sensitive secrets long after their time in government has ended. Such access is particularly inappropriate when former officials have transitioned into highly partisan positions and seek to use real or perceived access to sensitive information to validate their political attacks. Any access granted to our nation's secrets should be in the furtherance of national, not personal interests. Page 10, continuing Trump's retention of classified documents after his presidency. Oh, no, that's a new section. New section, Trump's retention of classified documents after his presidency. Page 10, paragraph 24. In January 2021, he was preparing to leave the White House. Trump and his White House staff, including NAUTA, packed items, including some of Trump's boxes. Trump was personally involved in this process. Trump caused his boxes containing hundreds of classified documents to be transported from the White House to the mar a -Lago Club. 25. From January through March 15, 2021, some of Trump's boxes were stored in the mar a -Lago's Club White and Gold Ballroom, in which events and gatherings took place. Trump's boxes were, for a time, stacked on the ballroom stage, as depicted in the photograph below, redacted to obscure an individual's identity. Also redacted to just look like an awful photo. <laughs> if you guys aren't seeing it, it's just like a cartoon photo or something. All right, 26. In March 2021, Nauta and others moved some of Trump's boxes from the white and gold ballroom 
to the business center at the Mar-a-Lago Club. End of page 10. Beginning of page 11, paragraph 27. On April 5th, 2021, an employee of the office of Donald J. Trump, Trump employee 1, texted another employee that the office, Trump employee 2, to ask whether Trump's boxes could be moved out of the business center to make room for staff to use it as an office. Trump employee 2 replied, whoa, okay, so POTUS specifically asked Walt for those boxes to be in business center because they are his papers. Later that day, Trump employee 1 and Trump employee 2 exchanged the following text messages. Trump employee 2, we can definitely make it work if we move his papers into the lake room. Trump employee 1, there is still a little room in the shower where his other stuff is. Is it only his papers he cares about? There's some other stuff in there that are not papers. Could that go out to storage? Or does he want everything in there on property? Trump employee 2. Yes, anything that's not the beautiful mind paper boxes can definitely go to storage. Want to take a look at the space and start moving tomorrow a.m.? Paragraph 28. After the text exchange between Trump employee 1 and Trump employee 2 in April 2021, some of Trump's boxes were moved from the business center to a bathroom and shower in the Mar-a-Lago's club lake room, as depicted in the photograph below. All right, moving on to page 12. There's the photo. Uh, you see just a bunch of boxes in what could be a ballroom. 29. In May 2021, Trump directed that the storage room on the ground floor of the Mar-a-Lago Club, the storage room, be cleaned out so that it could be used to store his boxes. The hallway leading to the storage room could be reached from multiple outside entrances, including one accessible from the Mar-a-Lago Club pool patio through a doorway that was often kept open. The storage room was near the liquor supply closet, linen room, lock shop, and various other rooms. On June 24th, 2021, Trump's boxes that were in the lake room were moved to the storage room. After the move, there were more than 80 boxes in the storage room, as depicted in the photographs below. Uh, you can see there's a lot of boxes in a room that might also have a laptop or something. Uh, then there's another photo. It, it does look like a storage room. All right. Paragraph 31. On December 7th, 2021... Nauta found several of Trump's boxes fallen and their contents spilled onto the floor of the storage room, including a document marked Secret Rel to USA FV, which is F-V-E-Y, which denoted that the information in the document was releasable only to Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, consisting of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Nauta texted Trump employee two. I opened the door and found this. Nauta also attached two po photographs he took of the spill. Trump employee 2 replied, Oh no, oh no, and I'm sorry POTUS had my phone. One of the photographs Nauta texted to Trump employee 2 is depicted below with the visible classified information redacted. Trump's unlawful ret retention of this document is charged in count 8 of this indictment. Trump's disclosure of section. Trump's disclosure of classified information in private meetings. Paragraph 32. In May 2021, Trump caused some of his boxes to be brought to his summer residence at the Bedminster Club. Like the Mar-a-Lago Club, after Trump's presidency, the Bedminster Club was not an authorized location for the storage, possession, review, display, or discussion of classified documents. On to page 15, paragraph 33. On July 21st, 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump gave an interview in his office at the Bedminster Club to a writer and a publisher in connection with the then forthcoming book. Two members of Trump's staff also attended the interview, which was recorded with Trump's knowledge and consent. Before the interview, the media had published reports that, at the end of Trump's president, term as president, a senior military official, the senior military official, purportedly feared that Trump might order an attack on country A, and that the senior military official advised Trump against doing so. Paragraph 34. Upon greeting the writer, publisher, and his two staff members, Trump stated, look what I found. This was the senior military official's plan of attack. Read it, and just show it's interesting. Later in the interview, Trump engaged in the following exchange. Trump. Well, with the senior military official, uh, let me see that. I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack country A. 
Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look, this was with this was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the department. This was the Defense Department and him. Writer. Wow. Trump. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. All sorts of stuff. Pages long. Look. Staffer. Hmm. Trump. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Staffer. <laughs> yeah. Trump. I just found. Isn't it that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Staffer. Mm-hmm. Trump. Except it's like highly confidential. Staffer. Yeah. <laughs> Trump secret and this secret information. Look at this. You attack and blah 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 blah. I think it's redacted. I'm not sure exactly what that it means. It's just three stars. So Trump. By the way, isn't that incredible, Staffer? Yeah, Trump. I was just thinking because we were talking about it, and you know, he said he wanted to attack country A, and what you did? Well, this was Trump. This was done by military and given to me, huh? I think we can probably right. Staffer, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, we'll have to try to Trump declassify it. Staffer, figure out. Uh, yeah, Trump. See, as president, I could have declassified it. <laughs> Trump. Now I can't. You know, but this this is still a secret. Trump. Or sorry, his staffer. Uh, yeah. Now we have a problem. Trump. Isn't that interesting? At the time of this exchange, the writer, the publisher, and Trump's two staff members did not have security clearances or need to know any classified information about of a plan of attack on country A. 35. In August or September 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump met in his office at the Bedminster Club with a representative of his political action committee, the PAC. End of page 16, continuing of paragraph 35. During the meeting, Trump commented that an ongoing military operation in Country B was not going well. Trump showed the PAC representative a classified map of Country B and told the PAC representative that he should not be showing the map to the PAC representative and not to get too close. The PAC representative did not have a security clearance or any need-to-know classified information about the military operation. 36. On February 16th, 2017, four years before Trump's disclosure of classified information set forth above, Trump said at the at a press conference, the first thing I thought of when I heard about it is how does this how does the press get this information that's classified? How do they do it? You know why? Because it's an illegal process and the press should be ashamed of themselves. But more importantly, the people that give out the information to the press <laughs> should be ashamed of themselves, really ashamed. Okay, section. Trump's production of 15 cardboard boxes to the National Archives and Records Administration.